I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Hey there, Merry fucking Christmas. Uh, you probably see this during Christmas. Got a little. I figure I still have a couple reviews I'm going to upload between here and Chris and uh, New Year's. John and Lindsay, if you're watching, I have record reviews for the New York Ripper and Robin Hood. The anime film, which that'll be on BitChute. New York Ripper will be on here. I'm going to do my favorite of 2019. Probably New Year's Eve. Just to space the, the videos out. But I figure... So this is Merry Merry Christmas. Where I'm talking about my top 20 worst fucking movies of 2019. Bit over the top, folks. You know what? Most people go from 20 to 1. I'm going to go with number 1 first because I got to save my energy for the ones I fucking hated the most. And it's hard to do a list because one day this movie pisses off more. Two days later, no, that movie pissed me off more. So as of now, my top 20 worst. Number 1. Jacob's Ladder. The remake. A movie so fucking good... That's for free on YouTube. Literally. If you type in like Jacob's Ladder. Like 2019 trailer. I think there's like a number sign in there. The entire fucking movie is up. On YouTube. <laughs> That's how much the studio gives a shit. About this movie. A movie that got delayed. And delayed. And just put out to. Not even. You know. Not even. Non theaters. Not. Kind of VOD. What was it, like. What the hell was it? Direct TV or something? I, I forget what the hell it was. What, this is my number one. Because this is the one that just... It was going to be Rambo Last Blood. And I hate that fucking movie. That's number three. Give me number three, my lord. I hate Jacob's Ladder Remake the most because... This is the epitome of what's wrong with movies today. If there's an example of what's wrong with movies today, Jacob Ladder is a prime candidate. Because here you have a film that did not need to be remade. Useless, pointless, unbelievably illogical in remaking. Because the original Jacob's Ladder to me is one of the best horror films out there. It's emotional. It has great acting, directing. It has a good heart on its shoulder. It's creepy. Beautiful score. To me, Oscar caliber acting from Tim Robbins. Dana Aiello, may he rest in peace. I believe also is... Elizabeth Pena, I believe. And I think she's no, she's no longer with us either. This remake, though, let's get the bare essentials of Jacob's Ladder. Let's rip off entire scenes and do them so piss poorly. A la the scene where Danny Allo beautifully tells Tim Robbins, Maybe the devils are really angels freeing you from the earth. 
and they remade that scene in such a piss poor fashion I wanted to punch my fucking computer screen. We have another twist, but this is a more a bullshit what in the hell twist. None of the movie made sense. The beginning, you have what clearly seems it gives itself away at the beginning because oh, who's this person strangling this person? Then the scene edits and you see no one or the fucking invisible man strangling this person. So you already know something's up. I'm like, the fucking movie itself is its own spoiler. And the characters you don't care about, the story makes you go, what, really? That's where you're going with? That's the direction you're going in? It kind of tries to have the themes of the original. It's as if they read, they saw one portion of the original movie with people being experimented on and they kind of just ran with that one aspect. Well, what do you want to do? A copycat? No, I didn't want them to do the movie fucking period. This is up there to me with the Hitcher remake, the Fog remake, as one of the most pointless, useless remakes of all fucking time. And I know I could be more in-depth on it, but I literally wiped it out of my brain. Just, feel, just watch my rant on the film where I did it right after seeing the movie. The Jacob's Ladder remake. Music. Instantly forgettable. Characters. Nowhere near any kind of depth or humanity that you saw in the original with Tim Robbins. The It's barely a horror film. That was another thing. This was more of a drama with a couple little th sort of thriller aspects. And once at a blue moon, it throws in a cheap jump scare to go, oh shit, we forgot. Horror is supposed to be somewhere in this movie. And a few drops of jump steer horror pops into this boring drama with a teeny bit of thriller aspect. Fuck. Extreme Measures with Hugh Grant is more of a horror film than this. And a better film. Fuck the Jacob's Ladder remake. Number two, Doom Annihilation. It's not that hard to make a Doom movie. I kind of saw one. It's called Hotel Inferno 2. Don't know what it is. Type it up in the search engine on YouTube and just watch the trailer. You go, wow, those guys did it for pennies. Literal pennies. And that looks more like a Doom movie. Well, this Doom Annihilation, this wannabe sci-fi channel film. It's not even good enough to be on sci-fi channel. It's a wannabe sci-fi channel film with this 30-pound bitch who looks like if you sneeze, she would blow away in the fucking wind. At one point, carrying a gun three times her size. Zombies, which who gives a shit in a Doom movie. Just because there's a couple of possessed people in the Doom games doesn't mean every time you make a Doom movie, they have to be the majority of the fucking villains. There's plenty of more creatures in Doom than just possessed people. Oh, here's a couple imps with a couple fireballs. Who you tins? But also have out of the blue powers a la trying to suck your soul out as if you're fucking Shane Stone from Mortal Kombat. Your soul would be mine. <sighs> Cheap Jack horseshit special effects. A feminine propaganda of, I am woman, hear me roar. Yeah, and it's a fucking chore. Special effects, I've literally no over the topness being had here. Seen better in fan films. These special effects. Sets that look cheap. 
that look like it's either lit too brightly or that high school production someone did on the original Alien that Sigourney Weaver talked about on her like Twitter or whatever and that is better production than this movie and more commendable and she goes to hell in this cheap five dollar green screen and then some creature that's never been seen in any fucking Doom movie appears almost like he had a fucking light visor or whatever the hell it was the BFG is such a pussy shoot one shot it destroys everything no it shoots one shot and the creatures like bounce back I've seen fingernail clippers do more damage than this fucking BFG. What does this stand for in this movie? Butt fucking gun? Is that the big fucking gun? Might as well be called the butt fucking gun. Does I feel like I got butt fucked watching this movie? So the little girl takes her butt fucking gun. And it doesn't even look like the BEG. I've seen... I have seen people on videos at Comic-Con with better props than this shit. And all the guys are losers or pussies or here's the black guy. I'm a tough badass. He dies in 10 seconds. Here's a little girl. She weighs about 40 pounds. You sneeze. Her brains get blown out, but she's able to blah, 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 blah. And... One of the early conversations is about whose underwear got stolen. That's right. One of the big conversations at the beginning is about stolen underwear. How about this? How about you steal a pair of my underwear and wear it? It's stuff in your face. Just like this movie should put a cock in its mouth and shut its face. Fuck Doom Annihilation. Is it that fucking hard to make a Doom movie, man? You make your 80 minute fucking movie, hell, 90 minute fucking movie, you do it like Hardcore Henry, you get a guy, you don't even have to give him dialogue, you can if you want, get a voice actor, hell, get someone like Thomas Jane or Carl Urban or someone else to voice him, hell, have Carl Urban, he did a do movie, he's in a shuttle, uh, he's left behind because they don't trust him because he did something before, even though he was in the right, but they don't like him because, I don't know, they, they have him alone, but, oh, you're a loner. This is a cliche you see in movies. Oh, he's the loner. You do just for yourself, but no, he's doing stuff for the greater good or because it's the right thing to do, but you get ostracized for that. He's left behind. A bunch of people go in. He hears chatter. Oh, shit. Death and destruction he's hearing. He comes out. He goes in. Uh, or something happens. He gets knocked out. He doesn't know how long he's been knocked out. He wakes up. He goes in. Weapons. Uh, throughout the movie, he finds dead people and different weapons. So you get machine guns, plasma rifles, and just a shitload of action, a shitload of creature battles, a shitload of effects. Practical good effects. It's not that fucking difficult. It's not that fucking hard. Why don't they do it? I love to get an explanation for that. Number three. Rambo Last Blood. More like Stallone's Last Chance. I know people are surprised that this is a number one. Here's why. If they had killed Rambo and did to him what they did to say Luke and The Last Jedi or Han Solo and The Force Awakens or Captain Kirk and Star Trek Generations or Ellen Ripley and Alien 3 and just fuck up the character. If they had done that, this would be number one, not only of the year, but of the fucking decade. But... The slimmest of praise I can give this is one, some of the action gore was B-movie fun, although 
too CGI for my taste. But, you know, B-movie fun. Although I still don't know why the fuck he has to have the doors playing. I don't ever remember Rambo needing fucking music to kill bad guys, but whatever. That's why, you know, to be this is Rambo in name only. He had more connection with his character in Bullet to the Head than Rambo. Oh, and they didn't kill him off. Because during the credits, he gets up, he rides off to the sunset, and he sees Roy fucking Rogers. Happy trails, Hans. Rambo Last Blood is number three because really above uh, Dark Fate and the, because spoiler alert, Dark Fate and Rise of Skull, Skywalker is four and five, which I'll get to. The reason I put Rambo Last Blood above it, even though you could technically say, well, come on, they're not as, it's not as bad as those movies. Here's my point of view. For me, the Rambo films, my favorite franchise. I like Terminator 1 and 2. I like some of the Star Wars movies. But Rambo is my favorite franchise. I even have this I wear every video. I have Rambo in my username. I am a Rambo fan. And yes, I am a Stallone fan. I've done a Stallone marathon where I reviewed every one of his movies. And the majority of them... I've enjoyed. I enjoy I See You. I enjoy Lock Up, Over the Top, Tango and Cash, Cobra, Dick Carter, Expendables. The list goes on. I love all four Rambo films. I think Rambo 3 is one of the most underrated sequels of all time. That's how I honestly feel. I love Rambo 3 to death. I will never understand the hate for Rambo 3. Insane, awesome, practical action set pieces from an awesome stick fight. Actual tank in an actual helicopter having a fucking dog fight. C4 blowing up at fucking helicopters. Rambo, a story I could get behind. Him trying to save Troutman. Troutman, of all the films, this is where Troutman gets the most character for Richard Crenna. He actually gets to have a buddy friendship with Rambo if first blood Troutman was his commanding officer Rambo 2 was his ally Rambo 3 is Troutman Rambo's friend in a way Rambo 3 technically they were always friends but Rambo 3 you saw they were friends that's one of the things they brought to the series And wow, Rambo is not as one-dimensional as people think. Because he has a little bit of humor, but they didn't overdo it like they would nowadays. It's subtle. It's a blue light. What does it do? It turns blue. That's subtle humor, and it worked. It gave Rambo a bit more something which people bitched about, and then when they do it, people bitched about that. It's not like he was making not not how's how you your mama jokes. Then you get to this move. I mean, Rambo 4 was the... Uh, Rambo 3, I love the death. Rambo 4 was the perfect ending. He went home. All four films. I'm like, this is the best franchise. It's perfect. I find no flaws with it. It started off strong. Rambo 2 is my personal favorite. Rambo 3 is incredibly underrated. Rambo 4 was one of the best movie theater experiences I had. You didn't need any more. Stallone got too greedy. He got greedy because Creed and Creed 2 came out and were hits. His other films were going straight to video, like Escape Plan 2 and 3 and Bad Trace. So I need to have Dust Off Rambo, give him one last ride, even though we didn't need it. No one was crying out for it. And it sucked. It sucked because Rambo did not feel like Rambo. He didn't look like Rambo. He didn't sound like Rambo. He talked more in Rambo Last Blood than he did in all four films combined. All four of the older Rambo films combined, he tossed not as much as he does in this one fucking movie. His niece, I did not give a shit about. Why should I care about this niece who would just come out of the blue? She says nothing. She does nothing. There's no reason for us to care other than, well, Rambo cares for her. That's not enough. Troutman, 
you went through two previous films to then have a rescue mission for him in Rambo 3. Here, you have another rescue mission, but there's no reason they care about the niece. None. There's no reason they care about any of these characters. The villains. You didn't have qualms with the villains in Rambo 3. That's one of the few flaws I have in Rambo 3. But even compared to those villains, these villains are nothing. These villains are straight out of a destructive video Steven Seagal film. I am not kidding. You just see these villains in Rambo 5 in a directed video Steven Seagal movie. You have a plot that's just a ripoff of Taken. You have barely any action until the ending. So even if you go into it as an action popcorn movie, it barely has any fucking action. You go into it for emotional support or the character, they think they're going to have this whole PTSD popping pills. It gets completely dropped and never brought up again. And nothing is done with it. When you watch the film, nothing is really done with it. People go, you need to see the other cut. I've seen the other cut. Believe me, you just sailed the seven seas with a giant or ah, with a parrot. What's he called? If you view it via that, you know what the difference is? There's a shitty CGI flood. That's the only major difference. Not violence, not actual character arts for a St Stallone Rambo, or big character development on the knees. Just a shitty flood. That's it. And just the way Rambo acts in this movie, again, why did he build all these fucking tunnels? You have to figure out for yourself because it's not explained in the fucking film that why he would have this extensive amount. Why would he play the fucking doors during an, a battle scene when Rambo actually used tactics? Have you seen First Blood? That'd be like him stealing a fucking Walkman and start playing uh, fucking ACDC music in the forest in First Blood. Or he brought together a cassette tape and started playing goddamn fucking Metallica during any scene in Rambo 2 in the jungles. Fucking stupid. Just constant amounts of stuff. Oh, he cut a heart out. I'm sorry, that's stupid. That's out of a fucking Mortal Kombat game. Not a Rambo film. I know you're pushing the violence Rambo 4. Oh, hey, I love gore. But there's cool gore. Cut a guy's head off. And just silly, stupid gore. Cut a guy's heart out made me laugh. I shouldn't be laughing in a Rambo movie. And for people, oh, you laugh at the other films, then obviously you're not a fan of the Rambo films as I am. And that's cool. But when he took the heart out, I laughed. <laughs> what the fuck? He took it. So, what is he, fucking Kano from Mortal Kombat? The, the beginning is boring. The middle is slow. A fucking hammer scene. Oh, he hits three people with a hammer. Then you barely see shit. Why am I supposed to be impressed by that shit? Why? Stallone, his character won't shut up. Why is that a problem? Do we ever forget when Stallone did First Blood, lines were cut on purpose? Stallone wanted that. Because then when Rambo did say something, it meant something. So you remember it. And that followed through with all four films. Limited dialogue. Don't push it. I'll give you a war you won't believe. Murdoch. I'm coming to get you. Your worst nightmare. Live for nothing. Or die for something. Your call.
what line am I supposed to remember in this movie? Because I can't think of a single one. And this is a Rambo film. My favorite franchise. This character could have been any character. It could have been his character years after The Specialist. Or Bullet to the Head. Or Robert Rath from Assassins. It could have been any of these other fucking characters. It's like you took a script and you went, stretched it out, put Rambo in it. Just have, just have people call him Rambo. Nothing about this stream Rambo. Slow pacing. Dull. Boring. I'm watching a Rambo movie and I'm being bored. Well, uh, he's 70. Exactly. He's 70 some years old. I don't understand. Even as a Rambo fan, I never said I want to see a 70 year old Rambo. I've never said I want to see a 70 year old John Rambo. I honestly think no one wanted to see that. And I'm sorry, folks. Age catches up with everybody. You cannot do as much, of course, as you could in your heyday. That's why there's not much action in the film. Just Stallone can't do as much as people want him to because that's just how it is with age. That is not a fairy tale. That is jeans. Not the fucking jeans you wear on your hips. It's the jeans with a G. And the character already went off into the sunset. This was a pointless subplot, pointless venture that was only done so Stallone could get another movie in the theaters because he was getting mad that his films were going direct to video. And you know what? If you can't do it, action wise you maybe you could with drama that was not pulled off here because you don't care about any other character in the movie i have zero reason to give a shit about the niece if you like the niece tell me anything about her that you liked what lines of dialogue what moments of acting do you like from her i can't remember her name both in real life or in the movie and yes, it's still strange that after Rambo 4, going to uh, see his father, maybe. We don't get that. We just have this niece out of fucking nowhere. I'm like, how old is this girl? But it's been like 10 years since the fourth movie. Well, 11 years. And then... There's no... And let's have this pointless reporter that does nothing, but just nothing. Let's have Rambo use no tactics. This is him getting to what he thinks is his family now, his niece. No tactics. He just in. Might as well have a fucking neon sign that says "Victim here." Uh, I remember Rambo. Hiding in the woods in First Blood. Using the jungle to be part of it. In Rambo 2. That'd be like in Rambo 2. He just marched into the Viet Cong camp. Who wants some? No. He didn't do that. Because it'd be stupid. But he did it here. And then one of those stupid cliches. That yeah. They've done in past movies. They doesn't mean you have to keep doing it or the bad guy has the hero dead to rights but you let him go to be alive again you can name as many older films that did that that doesn't mean it's a trait you have to keep going that's a trait that should fucking die oh i could kill the good guy but now i won't it just makes it so fucking stupid i could go on and on and on. 
one of the most overrated films of the year to so many people like, oh, man, hey, if you love it, teach their own. I'm not going to agree with you. Rambo Last Blood fucking sucked. There was barely any action, no drama that you can even sink your teeth into. The score was half ass regurgitated shit from Rambo 4, which was a good score. Here, store was by the numbers pedestrian by Brian Tyler. It looked like a directed video movie. I'm sorry, it did. It looked like a movie that would go straight to VOD. And it only got released because Rambo was in the title. I'm sorry. And because it pissed me off so much that you took a great franchise and now that's another one that has a dunce. Like every franchise now has it. Or almost every franchise. I do like all four Indiana Jones films, but they don't make a fifth one and they don't fuck it up. They do it with every fucking thing. Just for some reason we can't let shit alone. I don't know why. Greed, that's why. Speak to your greed. Number four, Dark Fate. More like Dick Face or Terminator Dumpster Fire. I ran on this like a month or so ago. What more can I say? Let's kill off John Connor and make everything in the first two movies fucking pointless. Yeah, these guys did all this stuff to stop Judgment Day and stop Skynet. Well, they succeeded, but right two seconds later, there's another one called Legion. Well, it's pretty much exactly like Skynet, even to the point we have Terminators and HKs, but... It's called Legion, and uh, this girl is now the savior. Let's have a movie that completely rips off and wants so badly to be Terminator 2. Its mouth is so on Terminator's did so much. It's a fucking balloon of semen ready to explode. Bad, piss poor CGI. Don't give a shit about the characters. Linda Hamilton, I'm sorry. She did nothing for me. She just seemed bitchy and tired and didn't want to fucking be there. And I don't blame her. Arnold, embarrassing. You have a Terminator that now I sell drapes. I'm not even going to do an Arnold impression. He sells drapes. Oh, he murdered John Connor, and then he yet went and saved a woman from being abused, and then stayed, and then felt bad. I guess they forgot the part where, well, who was that guy's name? Was his name Kyle Reese in the first film that said, Terminator that feels no pity or no remorse. No fear. It will not stop ever until you are dead. Did they forget the no pity? No remorse? Don't remember. Watch the trailer. Because even the narrator in the trailer repeats that too. Type it on YouTube. No pity, no remorse, no fear. No pity. No remorse. No pity, no remorse, no fear. One of the big scenes... A character has in the Terminator. And they completely forget it. No fear. No pity. No remorse. Well. He pitied that girl. And he felt remorse for killing John Connor. And these are people. That get paid. Millions of dollars. To write and direct this shit. And then Tim Miller is so stupid. To go. Why did people not see my movie? Because you're a fucking idiot. Can, can someone please explain that to me? If you love the film. Explain how you take a critical thing in the Terminator. No pity. No remorse. And you gave it pity and remorse. For no fucking reason. I guarantee you if you asked Tim Miller. He'd be like. Uh what? That was in the first movie? Yeah you're a fan. Are you a fan like you saw it once? And then, yeah, I remember liking it. 
I think that's why most of these people make these films and say their fans are. They saw it once, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Yeah, I remember liking it. So yeah, I'm a fan. <laughs> you got the girl with the Justin Bieber haircut. Uh, a wannabe fucking universal soldier. That's what she is. A wannabe universal fucking soldier. To the point she needed fucking ice. You're discharged, Sarge. Time to take the cleaver, just the Bieber. And the, the new Mexican-American who needs to go to night school. She takes Spanish. She gets a B. That useless bitch. I don't give a fuck about that girl. The new savior. Scenes that just... Let's rip off the, the chase scenes of Terminator 2. You even have a moment where they're being chased by a fucking T-1000 in a police type of uniform who is flying a fucking helicopter. Fuck me, man. How many times do these sequels have to rip off Terminator 2? I know y'all want to suck Terminator 2's dick. I like Terminator 2. But you know what? That's not even my favorite Terminator film. It's the first one. I find it funny that everyone wants... I, Terminator 2 is a good movie. Don't get me wrong. But I find it funny how all these sequels want to rip off Terminator 2. But not one single thing wants to rip off the original. The horror film that started it all. Because the Terminator is a horror film. People will not see it that way. Watch it again. It's a horror movie. It's a slasher movie. But with a fucking cyborg. Punching through people. Fuck you, asshole. Fuck you, asshole. Massacring the entire police station. But no Terminator film wants to be a horror film. Hell, if someone said, you have to do, I'd like, no, don't. But then they said, no, you don't do it, or I pull a trigger. And if I don't go pull a trigger, and I'm serious, I'd be like, okay, I want to make a horror film again. You want to rip something off? How about you try ripping that off? You know, if I had to do another Terminator to end it, I would have Sarah Connor and John Connor by Eddie Furlon and an actual horror movie killer cyborg Arnold. But then you run the risk of just being a remake of the first film, so then you know what's the point. It's, it's always like a road movie. Or some kind of road escape chase movie. Probably why you only needed two movies. Because there's really not much you can do with Terminator. Other than maybe a future war. Which is why Salvation is honestly the best sequel after T2. The one film I could deal with is Salvation. Did you technically need it? No, I'm fine with Terminator 1 and 2. But Salvation is not that bad of a movie. It's a lot better than Terminator 3. It's a fuck a little better than these new ones. Salvation, I don't mind. Despite its flaws. I can watch Terminator Salvation and be like, okay. But Terminator Dark Fate... Even the fucking end of the movie... When the Terminator last moments is a ripoff of T2. When it's looked at them and you see the light go Phew! Same as T2. Horrible CGI. So many people say, oh man, don't judge it by the trailer. They're still working on the CGI. Oh yeah? Are they still working on it even though it's been out for a month? Are they still working on the CGI then? Oh shit, I will have a fucking watch because it doesn't fucking matter because they're not fucking doing it. Because they didn't fucking do it. The shitty CGI in the trailer was a shitty CGI in the movie. And the story is nothing new. It's regurgitated shit in a microwave. Let's just rip off remake T2. And then let's kill John Connor <laughs> and make the entire franchise pointless 
Which seems to be a common thing nowadays. Let's just make franchises that people enjoy pointless. Just apparently that's good storytelling nowadays. Love someone to explain that to me. And considering... Number five. Rise of Shitwalker. I mean, what more can I say about Rise of Skywalker when I ranted on it for a fucking hour and a half? You made... Th- you know, a few people said it best. With rise with these Disney dipshit Star Wars movies, you can watch the prequels. Go straight to these Disney Star Wars films. Skip the original trilogy, and you will not miss anything with the story. People are like what? No, seriously, think about it. The end of Revenge of the Sith. Palpatine, he got hurt, but he's still out there. The Empire. There's even... Lo- Dad or Tactical Clones even mentioned plans for this Death Planet, Death Star type of thing. You jump to the Force Awakens. They're still taking care of the galaxy. The bad guys. There's a Death Star ten times bigger... The, pe- the Emperor, he's still alive? Of course, he was alive in Revenge of the Sith. Oh, this guy, Han Solo, he's just a deadbeat dad. Oh, okay. Oh, this guy, oh, he's probably one of those Jedi that, you know, sons of one of those Jedi. Yeah, he, I don't know, he's just some old hermit. Loves his titty milk. Oh, this girl named Leia, well, you know, she, oh, she must have been like a general girl. And, uh, huh. He has this one guy's sister. Oh yeah, she's the mom of the bad guy. Good parroting. <laughs> There's just... I know people enjoy Rise of Skywalker. This is a movie that... The reason the movie goes at a fast pace is that if you stop to think about the film, not a goddamn thing in the movie makes sense. It makes no sense why you have literally a hundred Star Destroyers buried in the ice. And it makes you go, wow, they really did nothing to Return of the Jedi. Remember Return of the Jedi? They were supposed to defeat the Empire. Do you remember that? How do you defeat the Empire if by Rise of Skywalker there's literally a hundred Star Destroyers? Which, by the way, each one has a cannon that could blow up a planet. Because that's a thing now. That the, the thing that you needed an entire Death Star to do in the original Star Wars that was the size of a moon to create all the energy to blow up a planet? No, now it's a cannon this big. You just put on a Star Destroyer and it'll do it. Oh, let's have... uh, Nothing in that movie makes sense. Let's have Finn go, Ray, I need to tell you something. And then Jiminy Jackass Abrams goes, Well, he was trying to tell her that he's Force sensitive and he can sense things with the Force. Oh, yeah, because that's really something you're going to try to talk to when you're ready to die. No, everybody else says, Well, he's going to tell her that he loves her. Because you clearly see that in The Force Awakens. No. Because they know that you fucked up. And you're an idiot. Jiminy Jackass. So you want to put bullshit. Or you're that much of an idiot. And you know what? I could buy Jeff the fucking... I could buy... I could buy Abrams being that dumb. When he's not having his mouth sewn onto Steven Spielberg's cock. This motherfucker so badly wants to be Steven Spielberg. He ripped him off in Super 8. He fucking... There's scenes in here, I swear he wants to be the Goonies, which Spielberg helped produce, or Indiana Jones with the, here's the magic dagger, and here's the thing, you do the... the. I didn't... The Emperor, he survived. How? He got vaporized. And then the whole Death Star got vaporized. They don't explain it. Well, he's a clone. Well, 
So, is he a clone? Is he not a clone? We don't know. We ain't gonna say shit. Figure out for yourself, dickhead. Oh, Kylo and uh, Ray love each other. Why? Is it because she saw him with her shirt off in the previous film? Is that all it took? She wants to suck on Kylo's nipples? Does she tease fantasy about the titty melt that Luke Skywalker was drinking? Sorry, Ray, it doesn't work that way. But how about at every point you go into the film? Wayfinders. Where the fuck did they come from? Was this Darth Vader's Wayfinder? If that's the case, why the fuck didn't Anakin Skywalker's ghost tell Luke Skywalker anything? Remember how they said Luke Skywalker was going around the galaxy looking for shit? Why didn't Anakin's ghost tell him anything? Can someone explain that to me? Remember, oh, Luke and Lando were looking for this guy because he had the magic, the, the, the dagger, the knife that to see where this place is at. Why didn't Anakin Skywalker tell Luke anything? You know? He won't shut up to Ray at the end. It was like, bring balance to the, fo to the, to the force like I did, Ray. You didn't bring balance to shit. How the hell did you bring balance to the force? You fucked everything up in Revenge of the Sith. You didn't kill the Emperor because the Emperor's still alive. You didn't destroy the Empire because the Empire's back ten times bigger to the point there's a hundred Star Destroyers with planet-killing weapons. A hundred of them. Big motherfuckers. Again, it'd be like if you had Red Dawn 2, Return of the Fuhrer, because there's a clone of Adolf Hitler, and there's Nazis the size of China. Wow, World War II did a lot of... Well, it didn't do shit, did it? Red Dawn 2, Return of the Fuhrer. That's what I'm talking about. Nothing in this movie made sense. C-3PO gets his memory wiped, but not really. Oh, Chewbacca dies, but not really. Um, this other thing happens, but not really. Two girls, random fucking girls, kiss at the end during the celebration. Who are they? I don't know. I've never seen them before. This is just an excuse to have two girls kissing. I watch a fucking porno to do that. Because they'll do more than kiss. Or they'll kiss in places I'd rather have them kissing. If I want to see two girls kiss, you're kissing the wrong lips. Lower. So, Ray can be force healing. Force healing is the dumbest thing you put in a Star Wars movie. Oh, but in the expanded, oh, the expanded universe that Disney said are not canon. Oh, baby, I didn't see the Mandalorian. I don't give a fuck what happened with Baby Yoda. I don't know anything about the Mandalorian. Never saw it. Don't give a fuck about Disney Plus. When you have force healing that you literally cure death, all bets are off now. All bets are off. Don't give me this. Well, uh, then how come? No. In the original trilogy, you had what? Five people that could do anything with the force. Luke. Vader, Obi-Wan, Yoda, the Emperor. Leia doesn't count because didn't, she didn't find anything until the very end. Like literally, literally uh, before the third act. Luke was new, so he was learning stuff. So there you go. Obi-Wan did stuff like the Jedi mind trick, lightsaber. Uh, he was very old. And then he died very early on in Star Wars. The Emperor, they saved him till the end. So he wasn't around in except a hologram in part two. Empire Strikes Back. Luke, Obi-Wan, Emperor. Yoda, very, very old once again, which means stuff is diminishing. 
and he lived by himself in a dado bar, so he had nothing to do, nowhere to go. He was dropped off there because there was no ship for him to leave. I guess, really, Yoda, sorry you're a pussy man, you didn't fly like Leia did. Can you imagine that? If Leia can fly, why couldn't Yoda fucking just fly like Supergirl, Mary Poppins to the fucking... That's what I mean. You bring this shit into it, you know. What's next? You don't have a John Rambo movie where he shoots laser beams out of his eyes. A John McClane movie where he teleports. A fucking Ninja Turtle movie where they're bulletproof. Oh wait, that fucking happened in Michael Bay's bullshit movies he produced. Hey, their shells are bulletproof, so fuck bullets. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. They keep fucking me over, don't they? But damn it. So all you had was Vader, and you saw him do shit? I, I, my point was, the way they created those stories, at least they said that they're either very old, or they're learning and training, uh, the prequels, they could do all because that was the prime. That was Jedi in their prime, and there were tons of them. Here, you just throw shit out of the fucking bag, like force healing, so we could tear death. So now my question is, with Star Wars going forward, now you don't go, well, wait a minute. Why isn't there force healing? Because you know, there's going to be a new Star Wars with fucking Jedi in it again. And that's the question that's going to pop up now. Well, wait, why don't you just heal him? Ray fucking stab wound in the gut. Well, Ray, I'm glad you didn't know this when Han Solo got stabbed in the gut almost the same fucking way Kylo did. Do you remember that? When uh, Kylo stabbed his dad? Man, Ray, I guess... Wish he had this force healing sooner. He could have healed Han Solo. In almost the same fucking stab. Literally, you get stabbed through with a lightsaber. She heals him from death. And she's fine. But when Kylo heals her from death, he dies. Because they, I guess she has bigger batteries than him. Just everything to... Oh, all the Jedi. Why the fuck are we hearing voices? Anakin, bring balance to the Force like I did. You didn't do shit. How did you bring balance to the Force? The Emperor's still alive. You fucked that up. The Empire's still ten times stronger. They're just called the First Order. And now they have a hundred Star Destroyers. You fucked up. Bring balance to what? You didn't bring balance to shit. How come Force Ghosts like Yoda can shoot lightning and Luke can physically hold a lightsaber when she threw it away? If you can do this shit as a Force Ghost, why aren't you helping with the final battle? Instead of standing with a thumb up your ass and a grin on your face. That's another thing they brought into this. Why the fuck can't... If Yoda can shoot lightning like in The Last Jedi and Luke can... Grab the lightsaber. Why can't Luke fight the Emperor? Why? Someone please tell me that. He can hold a lightsaber because he caught the, that fucking thing. Yoda can shoot lightning. Or fire. What I keep saying lightning. Lightning, fire, whatever the fuck it was. I'm like, wait, Yoda could do that? Did he ever do that when he was alive? I don't remember him doing that when he was alive. Maybe he did that in Revenge of the Sith. It's been a long time since I've seen that film. Man, we can't mix that with Big Trouble Little China when Ancient and Lopan are doing the much better movie. Big Trouble Little China, go watch that instead. I, I, I could go on for another hour on how Rise of Skywalker doesn't make any fucking sense. Finn, they did nothing with his character. Could have been interesting. A stormtrooper, 
that uh, turns to the good side. Nah, he's a janitor and he gets friend zoned hard by Ray. Does uh, what? He can't be. He can't be Ray's love because he's black. Yet these are the movies that we're so SJW. What's wrong with with Finn being with? What's wrong with Finn being with Ray and not this Krylo Ren bitch? For and oh, Finn is force sensitive. Then why didn't you make him a fucking Jedi then? You know, someone I forget who I, I saw this online. They mentioned, well, why don't they have it where Finn is also a Jedi, but he's a newbie, and he wants to start training too. And so, if you plan this out for three movies correctly, by the end you had Kylo turn Ray to the dark side. And Finn and Ray fighting, and Finn converts Ray to the good side, and then they both fight Kylo Ren. But if you did that, not bring back the Emperor, not fuck over the original, hey, you wanna know how you do it? Terry Fisher trains Ray, Finn just trained by Luke Skywalker. And that's how Finn is able to not only beat Rey, but convert her to the, the light side of the force. And you don't tell if Han Solo, be like, sorry man, uh, here's a big paycheck, we got, <laughs> we got enough money for you. We'll buy you three more helicopters you can fly. Why don't we do that? But hey, what do I know? Fuck, hour in and I'm only at number five and I got 20. These other ones, I mean, number six, I, I, I gotta stop talking about Rise Skywalker. I gotta stop. Uh, number six, Critters, A New Binge. I know this is not a movie. Technically, this is a web show. But I'm putting it on here because if you put them all together, it's the length of a movie. Like 80, 90 minutes long. And Critters A New Binge. I reviewed the Critters movies. I did not see the all new Attack. Whatever the hell it was called. Because this movie I hated so much. That I don't want to see a fucking Critter movie made ever. I love the first Critters. I love the second one. Three and four I could deal with. Despite their flaws. I reviewed those four Critters movies. I could watch, I could watch any of those four. Critters 2 is my favorite. Sorry about the burp. I'm getting constipated thinking about Critters A New Binge because there's a scene where a critter goes down on a lady and eats her pussy out. No, I did not stutter. Yes, you heard me right. Critters A New Binge, a critter eats a pussy out. Definitely not a gory way, just treat the pussy nice. But eats it like any of us would. You know, that the the correct way. Not the violent way, the correct way. I'm like, am I really I, I sat there and I'm like, I'm thirty some years old and I'm sitting here watching a critter kiss and lick a pussy. Granted, nothing up close. It's not like a fucking penthouse Larry Flint style. It's just it's in between her legs. And her liking it. I go. This is also the movie where one kid is part critter, part human. And there's one to be fucking hybrids, and it really goes over the top with the comedy to the point of a bad parody in the vein of fucking movie 43, and, and might as well be in that vein in Scary Movie 5, in that bad comedy realm. Uh, 
very, very cheap production values. I don't understand what anyone was thinking with this. Sh with this. I don't understand it. Cohen's, I, I sincerely just want to ask the people who made this, what the fuck were you thinking? What in the fuck were you thinking, man? A critter goes down on the lady. And people get paid for this. For, okay, if I wrote a script and had... Okay, I'm going to have a gremlin. Have sex with another gremlin. In the bathroom. While Moon River is playing on the soundtrack. Send me my motherfucking check. Please? Sally probably get made. Number seven. I completely forgot I even talked about this movie this year. Someone on Facebook reminded me. Dead Trigger with Dolph Lundgren. One of the worst Dolph Lundgren films I have ever seen in my life. Goes up there with retrograde. Easily one of the worst. I, I completely forgot. Because I talked about it very early in the year. And the rant is still up. It's when I was doing my Dolph Lundgren marathon. And I got so pissed off with this movie. Because I'm thinking, okay, it's based on a video game. Never played the game. It's a zombie horror movie. Cool. Dolph Lundgren in a zombie horror action movie. I liked the Battle of the Damned. Granted, needed a better director and a bigger budget. But Battle of the Damned was fun. It was B-movie fun. Dolph got the kick ass, kill zombies. Pretty straightforward, pretty short to the point. Battle of the Damned was fun. Again, not perfect. More money and better director. The handle a little less shaky in the action. But fun movie. Dead Trigger. Man, I... I am not over exaggerating. I have seen people make videos on YouTube with green screen that look better than this movie. Just the look of the film, the way it was made, the the production of this. My friend Michael Keane does uh, Star Trek fan films called Star Trek Valiant. And sincerely, he has much better production value than this movie that got released for people to pay their hard-earned money for. A group of characters you don't care about. A God, how the hell? Do I, how do I, a movie that I swear just meanders around, has no focus, doesn't know what it wants to do, doesn't know where it wants to go in the story, so it just keeps doing this, and it gets to the end. And you come to find out that the entire movie we've seen was a video game that some of these characters were playing. I believe the game itself is called Dead Trigger as well that they were playing in the movie. But that's not the only twist. Then on top of that, we hear, oh, a week or two or three later, there was a zombie invasion. So everything's normal and you're playing a game about zombie apocalypse and then a few year, few weeks later a real zombie apocalypse happens. And then it cuts to Dolph Lundgren who is a character in the game. But the way it cuts to it's like he's in the real world. And I say, wait a minute. That's the if that's the video game character of Dolph Lundgren from the game. 
Why is it ending with him as if it's the real world and this real zombie apocalypse when it's just in the game? And like, what, you don't train for combat in the game? You train in real life. Oh my God. You want to... Bullshit, fuck, bullshit, bullshit, fuck, bullshit, 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 fuck, bullshit, fuck, bullshit, fuck, bullshit, bullshit, makes me fucking hot, bullshit, fuck, bullshit, a goddamn Dolph Lundgren zombie film and it gets fucked up. That's why I don't look forward to anything. A few people ask me, what do you look forward to in 2020? Nothing. I know one person would say, well, wait a minute. I thought you looked forward to Bill and Ted 3 when you did your live streams. Yeah, I did those live streams months and months ago. Rambo 5, shitty Termin a shitty Rambo film, a shitty Terminator film, a shitty Doom film, a shitty Star Wars film, a shitty Critters film, a shitty Hellboy film, a shitty Men in Black a shit, two shitty films with Stallone. A shitty film with Dolph. I'll get the other Stallone movie in a sec. A shitty film with Arnold, Dark Fate, with Dolph, Dead Trigger, with Stallone, Rainbow Last Blood, and Deep Plan 3, which I'll get to. So, Stallone, Arnold, Dolph, Star Wars, Terminator, Rambo, Critters. It just never fucking ends. Even movies I was curious about. Disappointing as fuck, which I'll get to. I, I have no reason to look forward to Bill and Ted 3. Does any time they bring an old franchise bat, nine times out of ten, it sucks. And the one percent is a Blade Runner 2049, which becomes a very welcome surprise. Which I loved, saw in the theater, and of course it flopped. So I can't look forward to Bill and Ted 3 anymore. Because he had Dumb and Dumber 2, which was shit. And you have all these other movies. Shit. I saw a shitty Rambo film, a shitty Terminator film, and a shitty Star Wars film in the same fucking year. Why should I look forward to anything in the future for next year? Why? Oh, you cynical. I'm not making the shit up. I know a lot of people like Rambo S. Blood, Teach Their Own, but I'm not alone in hating Terminator Dark Fate or Rise of Shitwalker or Dead Trigger Dolph Lundgren. <sighs> Number eight, Captain Marvel, as I call her, Captain Mannequin. Brie Larson, she sucks. She seems like a piece of shit human being and she sucks ass as an actress. She can't act her way. I have a fucking high school play. Insult when she crashed to a blockbuster video and blast Arnold's stand-in display from True Lies. I'm like, that's a much better movie than yours, bitch. Sam Jackson, Nick Fury's turned to a pussy because he's just like, hey, hey. he might as well have a fucking tutu or fucking pink panties underneath those pants of his. Ooh, look at this cat. Look at the little pussy cat. Look at the cat, cat, cat. And, oh, you remember in that Captain America movie when Nick Fury is, the last time I trusted someone, I lost his eye. Yeah, he trusted a cat. And the cat fucked up his eye. And that's why he has the eye patch. Boring. Nonsense. Horrible lead. Nothing with the story, the characters, the development, the action. She's so super powered, three supermen couldn't equal the power Captain Marvel has. God fucking damn it. Oh, you just hate women. Oh, I guess you missed the part that I hated Rambo Last Blood. Oh, what's that? Is that a woman? Oh, shit. That, that's a woman right there. 
right behind me. You wanna? That's a good movie. Don't give a shit if you got tits or a dick. I want a good movie. And of course, that's subjective. And this is my subjective. So, I mean, uh, it's like an hour. I'm going to go a little bit quicker on this. Number nine, Estate Plan 3. Oh, what? You put this below Ramble Last Blood? Yes. I hate Ramble Last Blood more because the four Ramble... F you know what? It's... Imagine... How I put it. Okay, I'm looking at my TV. Imagine there's a TV you fucking love. And you buy it brand new and looks beautiful. Because you trust this brand. And then you get this other TV, eh, whatever, and it's free. They both don't work. Which one are you going to be more pissed about? Well, yeah, the, the, it's a funky looking TV and it looks like shit, whatever, but it was free and you know, I'm not surprised. Or, what the fuck, this, is a, this, this brand I trusted and this is great. You'll be more pissed at that. Restaurants. Oh, well, this restaurant is cheap ass horse shit. Okay, fine. Oh, it tastes like shit. Uh, oh, I love this place. It's best food. What the fuck? What happened here? Exactly. You don't be more pissed. Rambo as blood should be fucking awesome. People say it's awesome. I don't get it. A couple minutes in a fucking cave tunnel doesn't save an entire boring ass 80 minute movie. Sorry. Doesn't save a shitty story, shitty pacing, dull, non entertainment. No dimensional, can't even say one dimensional, no dimensional villains. Don't even have any presence or anything. No me no memorable dialogue. No action until uh, third act. And even then, it's all in the trailer. And boor I already talked about that. Steve Plant 3... I, all the Steve Plant films suck. Steve Plant 3, Devin Sawa is your villain. Yes, from Idle Hands and Final Destination 1. Stallone's in it a bit more, but... Cheap, low-budget, $5-looking movie. This director does not know how to shoot action. I don't know why the hell Stallone did these films. He must have really needed the paychecks. I don't know why. He was making $20 million, $20 million per movie back in the day. I think that would be enough to be satisfied for the rest of your life. This guy should be doing films a la Drive or Ryan Gosling or that caliber of movie. But no, he's doing the Steve Plan 3. The idea of Steven Seagal directed video films are run for their money. Like this is shit Steven Seagal should have been in. I don't even... That movie doesn't even deserve my fucking time to waste on it. Number 10. It. Shit. Chapter 2. I did not like it. Chapter 1. This was fucking way too long. It was like what? It felt like three hours long. What? Yeah, that movie was about as long as the entire miniseries from back in the day. The entire miniseries, which had both parts, was almost as long as this one fucking movie. This opening with the date couple, apparently that's in the book. Uh, but I don't know, it just, just seemed out of left field. It did. It just seemed like something that was out of left field and as if something else is going to come of it and it really doesn't. Sometimes you can't just... What killed me more was the giant Paul Bunyan thing which someone told me that was in the book. It's okay to change it if it's fucking stupid. A giant Paul Bunyan statue 
chasing you in its CGI glory. It's not scary or funny. It's just stupid. There's a reason why Stanley Tuber did the maze, the hedge maze, in his Shining movie. Just the topiary animal, fern animals were stupid. And you could tell they were stupid since they did in the Shining miniseries, which sucked. It's funny how Stephen Teen hated all his adaptations except like three of them. But now every adaptation, oh my god, is perfect. Five out of five. Every new adaptation is now a perfect movie to him. The guy who like hated everything except maybe Terry, Shawshank Redemption, Green Mile, and Cujo. But everything else sucked. Now everything's, yeah, perfect. The goddamn movie ends with them chastising Pennywise to death. They make fun of him to death. To turn him into a fucking baby. A clown baby. He turns into a clown baby because they made fun of him to death. And people want to give the original miniseries shit? Really? One more time. They make fun of him to death. They make fun of him so he turns to a baby. A clown baby. Oh my god. Oh my god, man. Oh my god. John Paul Bunyan statues. And clown baby. We made fun of him to death. You're just a clown. You're just a clown. You're just a clown. That's pretty much all he fucking said. Grr. Number 11, Dark Phoenix. Yeah, that's dark as my shit. I'll be honest, I don't remember a goddamn thing about Dark Phoenix. I really don't, other than the opening. I think some X-Men were somehow in outer space and could breathe, even though they were not in any spacesuits. I think one guy, like Nightcrawler, put duct tape over a fucking person's spacesuit helmet. Duct tape. I swear to God that's what happened. Duct tape. I swear. <sighs> You think they fucked up an X-Men 3. I like X-Men 3. I do. I like X-Men 3. No, this is how you fuck up that storyline. Dark Fieners. Number 12, Pet Cemetery, Useless Pointless remake that we didn't fucking need. Added... It just showed you cannot redo the story. And it had none of the impact, none of the visceral thrills, none of the heartbreak. The original Pet Cemetery, you really fell for when that little baby boy died. And I'm sorry, that one moment where the father is like, No! Is haunting? People say it's goofy. I don't get it at all. I just, I don't see it that way. 100% disagreement on that. When the father's on his knees and that twitch out, no! And then the flashes of the photographs of the baby, Gabe, to me it's haunting. That one moment is more impactful than anything in this cliche, typical, by the numbers, paint by numbers remake. With a sh. I wasn't a fan of the ending of the original, but this ending is even worse. Even way worse. And you go, really? And you either just seen a copy of the original or shit done, but not done as well as in the original. So either a Xerox or a dwindling copy like a lesser 
poorly made version of what you saw back in the day. Number 13, Men in Black International. Incredibly forgettable film. Chris Hensworth was a pussy in the movie. Liam Neeson, cash a paycheck. The girl was perfect. She found the Men in Black headquarters and she could do everything with, without any trouble. She could do this, this, this. The plot, again, base it by the numbers. Instantly forgettable. You don't remember, I don't remember much of a goddamn thing in it. Uh... It kind of spoils itself too because Liam Neeson's a big name. He's at the beginning because they show that scene first. Then it cuts away and you know. Okay, wait a minute. You're not going to cut away from a big action scene with Chris Hemsworth Thor and Liam Neeson from Taken unless there's something more to it. It's a kind of basic 101 point of action storytelling there would be like hey here's Tom Lee Jones Will Smith they're about ready to fight cut away you don't see anything be like what either this is extremely poorly made or there's something to it or both or this was both and this movie's just I don't even know why this movie had to be made. No one gives a shit about Men in Black film without Will Smith and Tom Lee Jones. What made the films work were those two characters and actors. It's playing movies about aliens. What made that film work were those two people. But for some reason, the studio doesn't understand that. Oh my god. Uh, number uh, all, pretty much all these movies are ranted on my channel. So if you want to hear more in-depth thoughts, I know I, I have in-depth rants on Jacob's Ladder, Doom Annihilation, Rambo: Last Blood, Dark Fate, Rise of Skywalker, Cruiser: New Binge, Dead Trigger, Captain Marvel: Steve Plane Three, It Chapter Two, Dark Phoenix, Pet Cemetery, Men in Black. Number fourteen, Hellboy. I know I have I have friends who like the film, and that's cool. It's just not for me. Never saw Stranger Things, so I don't know shit about David Harbour, but he did absolutely nothing for me as Hellboy. I thought he was an awful Hellboy. He was definitely no Ron Perlman. I'm sorry, man. Uh, the plot, the tone is all over the place. Sometimes it wants to be a badass already action movie. Other times it wants to be a lame comedy that just doesn't work. It could go from, oh my god... He's in this other realm talking to this creature and there's fucking dead kids hanging in her closet or t whatever the hell it was. Like behind the door, like dead kids hanging on hooks. And then like two minutes later, it goes to Hellboy chasing a pig that's the size of a baby in the screwball comedy slapstick bullshit. It's like, I'm watching Hellraiser and now I'm watching ba Baby's Day Out. In a span of two minutes. Hellraiser's day out. Pinhead's day out. Pinhead as a baby. Instead of, you know, walking on cranes, he's just shooting fucking chains. And Pinhead going goo goo ga ga to Joel Pantoliano and whoever the hell, or who was the three. I haven't seen Baby's Day Out forever. Pinhead's day out. I tried to get the big ah, his nails got my hands. It's just way too jarring. Miljovic, boring as hell as the villain. The the one Asian guy who became a CGI leopard or whatever that cheetah, whatever the hell it was, and did nothing. He did nothing. So, is it, you know, what was the point of this character? He accomplished nothing. How how did he help? He got his ass kicked. He, he did nothing. The goggles, they do nothing. He did nothing. Just. And, and I felt like you were switching channels. Just like, it's this, then this, then this, then this, then this, then this. 
then it's fucking Teen Arthur. And someone told me, well, that's how it is in the comics. Really? He's related to Teen Arthur in the comics? Learn something new every fucking day. I think that's stupid, but whatever. I don't get how a thing made from hell is related to Teen fucking Arthur. Or I, I think that's how it works. Again, some of these movies I haven't seen since they came out, so my memory's foggy. I swear they said something like he's related to Teen Arthur. I could be wrong. And if that's the truth, I'm like, he was made from hell. Why? Whatever the fuck. Where the fuck? Number 15, Alita Battle Angel. I, I'm sorry, this movie's overrated. Jimmy Tammy, two for two. Fucking producing Terminator Dark Darth Fate and producing this bullshit. My friend Michael Keane said it best. Flashy visuals, but no heart. Yeah, it's flashy visuals, but there's no heart to it. It's got tin heart, but not an actual flesh and blood, soul and heart to it. This is a movie that it seemed like it didn't know what it wants to be. Okay, her exploring her origin. Who am I? No, we want to be a shitty ripoff of Rollerball. No, we want to be, we want to rise up to go up there. Oh, here's my friend. I'm going to save him. He's saved. Two minutes later. Oh shit, he's dead. <laughs> I saved my friend. Literally five minutes later, he dies. Wow, good job on saving him just to die. The, the lead girl, I don't have a problem with her acting, the more I think about it, to be fair. Some of the visuals were very flashy and nice, but I don't care about the story, I don't care about the characters, I don't care about the action, that it does look like a video game, maybe a PS4 game, but it just, I, I feel no investment into the lead character. I feel no chemistry between her and this guy, the love. Uh, flashy visuals can be fine, but at this point, maybe I just, I need more than that in a movie. Like when I talk about my favorites, John Wick 3 has great visuals and action, but I also like the story. I like the world. I like Keanu Reeves. I like Lawrence Fishburne. I even like uh, Ian McShane and uh, Lance Reddick with the hotel. and I like those characters. Like Halle Berry. I mean, here, the lead girl didn't do a bad job. But I don't give a shit about a character. I know people are like, oh, I want a sequel. I'm like, why? Yeah, go look at that. I don't understand the, the love for the movie, man. You just hate women. <laughs> yeah, that's why I enjoyed uh, Everly with Selma Hayek or Kidnap with Halle Berry. You know, the biggest guy, the guy was the biggest defender of that movie, especially the uncut version that only got released in fucking Canada in the Blu-ray market for Kidnap. But uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> 16 Shaft can kiss my shaft. Let's make Shaft into a guy, oh, he's old, he doesn't get it, and this young, nerdy guy. I'm your son. Like, turning Shaft into kind of a, a lame, unfunny buddy comedy. And it's directed by the guy who did fucking Ride Along. And Ride Along 2. Yeah, that's the guy that get to do a Shaft movie. The director of fucking Ride Along 1 and 2. That kind of says it all. Number 17. Pitchforks, I'm sure, already. Avengers Endgame. Not a fan of Avengers Endgame. 
I'm not even a fan of Infinity War. I think those two are incredibly overrated. I don't get the praise for Infinity War, and I don't get the praise for this. Endgame, Hulk went from badass, intimidating Hulk smash to I'm a nerdy guy that takes selfies and offers people tacos and... Oh, I'm so embarrassed about how violent I was when they're in the time travel and he sees his older self. I'm like, why are you making the Hulk into a pussy? Why do we have a fat Thor? Don't give me all his character development. Not when it's played strictly for laughs. And most of the time it's for laughs. The first reveal is that oh, it's meant to elicit laughter. <laughs> what? And he's sitting there with sunglasses and referencing the dude, Big Lebowski. It's meant for laughs. Give me a break. You turn Thor into a joke. You turn Hulk into a joke. You turn Iron Man into... This close to being Jesus. Captain America quits. Which I, I didn't understand that whole thing. I know he wanted to do his last dance. But I'm like. Why couldn't you just have Captain America. Retire and be nomad. Or whatever the hell that character was. Or I don't know. He goes back in time and actually follow time travel like most fucking movies do. So it becomes less fucking confusing. And you know the the Captain America has left. She's there, sad. Somehow the time travel fucks up, and maybe maybe a. Uh, Captain America becomes the the puny Steve Rogers, but she loves him for what he is in here and not for looks. And they have their last dance and then they she loves him for who he is in here and here and not the body. So you give an explanation as to why he can't go out there and fight because he lost his I don't know how. I mean, it's a fucking superhero movie. You can make they make a lot of other shit out. Like how the fuck Bruce Banner is and Hulk are the same now. But if you don't want to have Captain America to do his last dance, have time travel work the way and be like, I'm gonna return. Maybe the fact he's by himself returning all the Infinity Stones. I don't know. And so the fuck's up and he's now the, the puny Steve Rogers. But again, she loves him for who he truly is. And he has his last dance. He's able to live his whole life with her. And he sadly, he can't do anything. Or, you know, he'll help out locally. Like he did in Winter Soldier. When he was helping people with the... I don't know. With the, the veterans. And people know who he is and he can tell the whole story. Or they don't and... Uh, my name... Uh, anyway. There's a lot of other things about Avengers Endgame I did not like. <sighs> Thanos is overrated. I'm sorry. Thanos, to me, is not the best villain ever. I, I think his plan was stupid all along. I like how they can beat him up when he has all the Infinity Stones, but then they can't do anything in this movie when he has none of the Infinity Stones, and it's a younger Thanos, and it's just... <sighs> I'm also just the entire superhero movies. I think that's the thing. For the most part. There's always exceptions, but for the most part, I'm just tired of the entire Marvel stuff. 
I have the rest. Number 18, The Lawn Shot. I didn't review this one. It's just a very boring, over-lawn comedy with Seth Rodian and Charlie's Throne. Where it deals with politics and... Charlie's Theron is in politics. Seth Rodin. I think he dealt with journalism. They're old friends. They meet together. They have fun. It just wasn't funny and just overlong and boring and dull. Number 19, Triple Threat. Disappointing. You have Equal Away is from the Raid and the Raid 2. You have Tony Jaw. You have Michael Jai White. You got Scott Atkins, and you make a movie where this director fucked up badly. He fucked up with the story, bad story he told. Equal away is barely shares this, any screen time with these with Tony Jaw and these other guys. Equal away is I don't know who hates him, but he's always getting his ass kicked in the movie. Most fights he loses. He doesn't really win unless someone helps him. I don't know why they made him so fucking weak in the movie. Uh, I don't mind Tony John in the film. The other guy, Tiger Chin, I think there's plenty of other people you could have found that would have been better. Uh, the movie didn't, didn't have as much action as the trailer seemed like it would. <sighs> Uh, it's like this guy did Accident Man with Scott Atkins which was actually a pretty decent film that's why I thought oh, okay this would be good and it just they shit the bed man and I just I didn't like this direction they took with the story and I go more in depth in the review but it just let down of a movie, Triple Threat. Very let down from that movie, man. Should have been so much better. And like, you can't really care about the characters because Tony John and the other guy, they're working with the bad guys, but they're not too bad. But the equal way is, he's a guy who has have avenge his family but then he's doing shit that's like really suspect as well so then you don't really care about any of the main characters I just and then uh, again, Equal Way is they call it Triple Threat but Equal Way is for most of the movie is now with the other two Tony John and the other guy it's Triple Threat but the three of them are barely together as a trio <laughs> Equal Ways, great talent and martial artist. Go watch uh, Headshot, I believe it's called. Go watch that film if you want your Equal Ways fix. Humongously better movie. Very underrated because no one ever talks about that movie. Headshot. Fanta to me, fucking awesome action movie. Where Equal Ways is treated with respect and actually gets... Ma massive amounts of ass especially the end fight holy shit that's one of the better end fights I've seen in a long time in headshot I'm not even kidding fucking awesome fight at the end <coughs> or go if you saw triple thread you got pissed go watch or rewatch headshot and number 20 since this is as long as a fucking movie Gemini man Gemini Man, Gemini Man, Gemini Man. Disappointing as shit to me. I liked the first trailer. I liked Will Smith. I liked the idea. They took this idea and the fact they made such a boring movie with it. Dumbfounds me. Because you give away in the trailer that it's a younger clone. You have a film where the clone doesn't even pop up to like almost halfway into the fucking movie. 
The rest is just basic, typical, derivative, oh, I don't want to do this anymore, I'm going to retire, oh, no, they want you to not retire so they don't kill you, oh, I met this person and she's not really who she said she was, like, so by the numbers, it was mind-boggling. And then the clone comes in and they have like two battles? One that was okay where it went from they're shooting at each other and then they get in the uh, motorcycle chase and then to the point where the younger is trying to fight the older Will Smith with the fucking motorcycle. It was a little bit over the top, which gave me a little bit of fun vibes. And then a little pissy fight at night. That uh, was whatever. And then young Will Smith. It's a, uh, and it's, one thing leads to another and it just becomes they become buddies and they team up to fight the bad guys and then there's a fucking third clone that you don't see because it's in a mask then it's revealed and the special fat CGI I thought they looked good in the trailer I was wrong <laughs> You want to see movies with clones, go watch Moon with Sam Rockwell. Go watch The Sixth Day with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hell, go watch Replicant, where you had a clone and also Van Damme as a serial killer. And they clone him so Michael Rooker can learn from that clone how this guy ticks and anything that the clone might know. Pretty good film Replicant. I reviewed that when I did my Van Damme marathon where I reviewed all of his movies. Replicant's pretty damn underrated. Pretty good flick. Go watch Replicant, not Gemini Man. My friend Michael Keane, if you see this, I think, no, actually, I think you've seen, he's seen Replicant. I think he mentioned a long, 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 long time ago. There, go watch Replicant, The Sixth Day. Very disappointing movie. I thought I didn't think it'd be as boring as it turned out to be. But yeah, that's my list of my twenty worst see <laughs> got burned out, but yeah, say that for number twenty, not for number one. Thanks for watching. Take care. Got so pissed I had to take off my fucking <laughs> little coat. Thanks for watching, take care. Stay tuned. Hope you guys have a Merry Christmas. Uh, I will have a list of my favorite films of the year before the new year. Until then, see you guys later. Bye-bye.